Hi, I'm Derek Maines, CEO of The Process Fixer, and today I'm going to start a new series for you talking about how. I've been out speaking to CEO groups for the last couple of years, and I'm really surprised how often in conversation, when we're talking about how the work gets done, how the sausage is made inside their organizations, that we very quickly come to a realization together that they really don't have a very good idea of how things get done inside their business. Many times that's because they have that misconception from the book, The E-Myth, where Michael Gerber supposedly said, work on your business, not in your business. And anybody that's actually read The E-Myth knows that that's not what Michael Gerber said. He talked about systemizing your business so that you don't have to be the technician, that you don't have to be the manager, that you can focus on bigger things. For some reason, we've decided to uh, turn Michael Gerber's work into a meme. And instead of focusing on systems, as Gerber says, you must do first, we've just said, we'll work on our business, not in our business. So there's this misconception among CEOs that they need to be spending the majority of their time working on larger strategic decisions and leaving the details to well, who do you leave the details to? My grandmother always used to say the devil was in the details. So we've got to be very, very careful. If we're leaving the details to someone else, we may come to find that the reason that we have a lot of inefficiency in our systems and processes is because of that. So I, I want to talk about that in this series. And this eventually will be a book. I've been working on this book for a while. But we decided we wanted to bring this to you as a series of video snippets so that you could understand the message. We could see how it engages with our audience, and uh, then we'll work on delivering the book to you next year. So many of you are very familiar with the work of Simon Sinek. Uh, Simon Sinek said that all businesses know what they do. Some even know how they do it. Fewer still know why. Start with why. We've all heard that message. Sinek has sold millions of books, the TED Talks and speeches, and we've all seen it. And it's a great concept. We have to start with why. We have to understand why we exist. We have to communicate that message to our customers and to our employees so that they understand why. Once you begin down the path and journey of why, you also start to realize that the reason that there's a lot of miscommunication and, uh, and, and that there's conversations happening that shouldn't be happening inside your business that are misdirected is because we haven't communicated the why with our people. Here is why we are doing this. My wife likes to tell the story when she was a little girl, they were at a lake for a picnic and the rangers and lifeguards came running up to them and there was a large group and they said, uh, a little girl is lost. We need you all to join hands and come walk into the lake. We need to make sure that she's not in the lake. So they, of course, everybody rushed down there and eventually they found the girl. She went to the wrong uh, picnic table. But uh, the point of that story is that when the ranger and the lifeguard came to the table and said, a little girl's missing, can you please take these actions? People took the actions. If the lifeguard had just come up and said, hey, you know, if you guys could come on down to the water with us and join arms and walk to everybody would say, I don't know what you're talking about. So we have to start with why. But recognizing that Cynic said, you got to first start with why. Well, what's the next step? Well, obviously it's how. Because as Cynic said, very few companies know how work gets done. So it's important to know the why. But once you understand your why and you have implemented your why, the next step is how. Now, hearing this message from Cynic was really transformational to me. It was transformational to many of you. But the next piece of it is we have to get into the how. We have to begin to understand uh, this journey of self-discovery that we discovered with finding the why that turns in to a journey really of business discovery, of a profound knowledge of our business, a profound understanding of how the work gets done, a, a, a profound um, knowledge of where there are bottlenecks and problems inside of our systems and process, and that should develop into a list, a list that has been created by the people doing the work, a list that is ranked and prioritized with potential remedies to problems that are happening, should not be happening inside the business, 
and uh, a list that you can then strategize against and you can go resolve these issues that people in the business uh, are specifically bringing up and saying, if you could resolve these things, we could do higher quality, better work in, in a better timeline. So that's what we're going to be talking about in this series. Uh, this is truly the next step. Now, I want to tell you that it's important as well to understand that in your how, in your why, you could write something down. You could write down why we exist. We're also familiar with strategies being written that way or plans being written that way. We also know that we get financials from our business. So you also need to have spreadsheets that tell you what happened, what is happening inside the business. The only methodology though that actually tells us how and where is a map. So we've got to get good at mapping out our businesses. We've got to get good at putting maps together that explain the work, that show the interconnectedness of the work, how all the actions turn into results and how those results turn into projects which become process that combine together become systems that become a system of systems for your business, how you get the work done. When you understand how you get the work done, you obtain competitive advantage and you gain that advantage because you truly understand what it takes to get things done, how to produce better quality. You're getting feedback from your people uh, on how to improve those cycles. And that makes you significantly more competitive than your counterparts because you can produce a higher quality of product in a faster time. So this doesn't matter if this is manufacturing or if it's legal or if it's whatever it is. We live in a society where people want things quickly and being able to deliver them high quality uh, with speed creates a value equation where people are willing to pay more for your product and service. So why is just the beginning? The next step in your business transformation needs to be the how, and that's what we're going to be talking about in this series. I'm Derek Maines, CEO of The Process Fixer. Make sure you like and subscribe. Tune in for this. There's about 30 parts to this, and I think what you will find throughout time is we will keep stacking upon this concept to help you create operational excellence inside your organization, to help you understand how to manage projects, how to bring change management into your company, how to get your people on the right page so that they're not resisting change, but they're actually embracing change, and that we even change that term from change to progress. And that's really what we want to do through this series. I'm Derek Maines, The Process Fixer. Until next time. You ready? Let's go. Welcome to The Process Fixer. Help you see the bigger picture. Derek Maines is the elixir. Cut and waste away like scissor. Woo! Got a problem? He can solve it. He's an expert with the process. So for sure you'll see a profit. Bottom line profit. Analyze the work your people doing every day. Expose the inefficiencies getting in the way. Advise you how to automate, outsource, abbreviate, eliminate, innovate. Now there's more food up on your dinner plate.